Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to my fellow Gibsonian citizens. It is a wonderful time to be joining me here today. Uh, this is our very first 8th grade U.S. History GCast as presented by Gibsonia. Uh, if you're not aware of how this will be set up, you can always read the blog as posted on the school website. But also, I'll tell you right now, uh, we're going to structure it based on what the tasks are at hand, whatever we need to get accomplished for the day. But also to make sure that we are having enough choices. We're going to utilize a choice board oftentimes within the day's lessons. So to make sure that you all have an opportunity to show your strengths to me and show that I can advocate for all your learning abilities. Now, just an update on Mr. G. I just uh, finished voting today. So doing my civic duty, but also tomorrow I will be serving as an election judge at the local precinct. Now, I think that is very fitting considering we just got done with our election simulation. We're well aware of all the election processes, all the different voting systems. So I'll be sure to report back on that once, uh, once I've accomplished that job. Now, of course, the first topic at hand is our New York Times country of the week. Country today is Belize. You know the rules. If you go five for five on the questions of the Country of the Week quiz, you get 25 gib. I mentioned in the seventh grade video that I went four for five, which is not bad. Uh, I also rattled off a very corny joke about the country name. So if you want to go roll your eyes at my joke that I made, please, of all means, by all means, go see that seventh grade video. But for those of you that are uh, not willing to do so, that's fine. We'll move right along to our next topic. Now, our objective for today will be able to recall important details of the Illinois Constitution and Illinois Constitution history. So there's a couple ways that we may go about doing this. Our first option over my shoulder is to read your Illinois Constitution booklet that you were to bring home. Uh, if you do not have this in your possession, luckily enough, I will post the pages needed uh, to be read on Classroom. So have no fear. Uh, another option over my other shoulder will be to uh, follow along and take notes on the slides that I will post also on Google Classroom. And your last option would be to sit here with me and to go through those slides while I uh, narrate the important details that will help you to follow along at home. The choice is yours. All right, so let's get into it with the Illinois Constitution. So in order to get in, into any details about the Illinois Constitution, we first must talk about Illinois history. So. Uh, that, of course, begins with our state becoming, well, a state. In 1818, that's when this happens. And I'm sure we well remember this since it was just a little while ago where we were celebrating the bicentennial of Illinois becoming a state in 2018. Of course, bicentennial, as we remember, is 200 years. Uh, so uh, that should be fresh in our memory, uh, remembering that Illinois became a state in 1818. Our first capital was Kaskaskia. Uh, which also happened to have been an early Native American settlement before uh, be before Illinois became an actual full-fledged state. And then that was followed up by Vandalia. Both of these cities are still around today. People still live there. Um, and they definitely still have a plenty uh, of Illinois history to offer. Now, we are well aware that Springfield is our now long standing capital and current capital as well. Uh, and this is also a place that we visited in either fifth or sixth grade, depending on the the, the year that you guys would have went on this field trip. But uh, it's a very important place for us, uh, obviously, since the governing body living in the city, uh, but also just because of the history that comes around it with Abraham Lincoln, but also uh, with uh, the, the kind of power that's seated at Springfield. Now, moving into Constitution history. The current Illinois Constitution was adopted in 1970, as we've talked about a few times in class already. Uh, but we've had three previous Illinois Constitutions, giving us four total Illinois Constitutions. Our first one, of course, comes in 1818. That would be obviously the original, as uh, the state was being founded. In 1848, 30 short years later, there was significant changes, enough to warrant having another Constitutional Congress to change the Illinois Constitution that are going to add a lot of power to people in elections. So that means um, Illinois citizens are allowed to elect more people to more positions in the government, giving them more of a voice of the governing body. And then in 1870, there would be one more constitutional convention. And this time they must have did a very good job because this document's going to govern us for over 100 years, uh, which let's put this in a little bit of perspective. There's people alive today that were governed by this 1870 document. So 
once again, people alive today were governed by a document that was five short years removed from the Civil War. Uh, so in 1970, it's not surprising to find that the framers of the new current 1970 Constitution felt that the 1871 wasn't modern enough for the Illinois that we now live in uh, with a much more uh, global situation that we live in, but also a much more modern uh, society. Now, of course, if we recall from last year with the U.S. Constitution, it's well over 200 years old and it's still uh, alive and thriving. Uh, and we refer to the U.S. Constitution as a living document because it's always being added to or maybe even scratched out sometimes. Uh, and the, the key difference between the U.S. Constitution and the Illinois Constitution of 1870, the 1871 wasn't as well structured as the U.S. Constitution. One. There's a lot of things we've looked at the U.S. Constitution several times and thought, mm, maybe a couple tweaks, but other than that, it's pretty good. Uh, we, can, we, we can always add to it. But for the most part, it gets the job done where the Illinois Constitution of 1870 just it, it, by, by the time 1970 rolled around and it was, there was just too many holes to just fix. It was better to just scrap it and restart anew. So that's going to be a short, quick bit of notes that we're looking at today. Don't want to just lecture for an hour uh, on YouTube. So obviously I'm going to cut it short here now. You can expect uh, tomorrow we're going to get involved in a little bit more detail on the uh, the details of the legislative branch, uh, but also um, maybe a couple more bits and odd ends of the Constitution history. Uh, remember that on Google Classroom will be posted a, a couple of questions to make sure that we've been taking diligent notes uh, to help you review these last two slides on Illinois history and Illinois Constitution history. So uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.